In the early days of the 20th century, Jack London was one of the most well-known writers on the planet. His classic, The Call of the Wild, gleaned from his days as a gold miner in the Klondike wilderness, was read by millions and translated into 60 languages. Put him on the literary map. From that one book, a great writing career was launched. In a few short years, he pounded out 50 books and many short stories that readers just devoured. He used to write a thousand words a day. Making 10 to 15 cents for every word he wrote. He worked in a frenzy and told stories as no one else could. And all his material came from real life, his life, a series of wild adventures all strung together. He was a good writer because of his curiosity and how people lived, their thoughts, their dreams, their struggles. All of these things Jack London picked up in all of his travels. They're gripping. The pacing is generally excellent in these stories. You know, you don't get bored reading them. His daughter Joan called his early writing hunks of raw life hammered into words. Said writer Alfred Kazan, the greatest story Jack London ever wrote was the story he lived. It seems every day of his life was material for a new chapter. And in 1905, he settled down with his wife Charmian on a ranch in Sonoma County. Today, it's a state park dedicated to preserving the legacy of this American icon. It's here visitors come to connect with Jack, to walk through his tiny cottage, see his writing desk, collections from his travels, marvel at stunning views of the vineyards and forests that frame his beloved Beauty Ranch in the shadow of Sonoma Mountain. And it's here thousands visit the home he never got to live in, the Wolf House. This was his dream house. It was destroyed by fire in 1913, crushing the spirit of Jack London. He was devastated. A century later, it appeared history would repeat itself. You can knock this down, otherwise it's gone. In October of 2017, Jack's ranch was suddenly in the path of fast-moving wildfires ravaging the California wine country. What it was is a fire tsunami. None of us knew the fire could move that quickly. Mandatory evacuation order, leave your homes. You know when the firemen are leaving, you know that fire is beyond control. Hey, 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 let's get out of here. The dry Diablo winds roar out of the Mayacamas Mountains, pushing flames toward Jack's Park. That was worst case scenario. A normal fire up there is gonna be bad by itself. When you put 60 to 70 mile an hour winds behind it, there's not much you could do. It was 100% running towards the park. Fearing the imminent loss of this national treasure, crews scramble to save priceless pieces of history. State parks came into the park and very rapidly moved out many of the artifacts and didn't stop until they were ordered to leave. There's just so many little odds and ends that help tell the story of who Jack London was. A tremendous amount of Jack London history. It's absolutely terrifying because behind you, your world is burning up. We were scared, frantic. We didn't know what to expect. It was starting to look a little hopeless. When I left the ranch, I figured I might not ever see this thing looking like it is now. It's already blown past Warm Springs Road, headed toward London Ranch Road. That for sure the park was gone. I was actually thinking about the park the whole time. and Jack London is taking America on a new adventure across the wild Pacific. He built the snark to fulfill a dream, to take he and his wife Charmian and his readers around the world. In Honolulu, he discovers surfing and introduces the sport to an eager country. In Tahiti, he masters the outrigger canoes and, camera in hand, captures the smiling faces of Polynesia and then sails to the Solomon Islands, a place he calls the raw edge of savagery. Coming face to face with cannibals, it all becomes fodder for years of storytelling. He was chasing the disappearing western frontier and devouring the details of a new world he found just over the horizon. 
It was just the latest journey in a life that raced breathlessly from one adventure to the next. It all began in 1876. A plaque marks his birthplace at 3rd and Brannan Streets in San Francisco. It does not mention the struggle of his early years in Oakland, nor tell the story of how he took the name London, not from his father, but his stepfather, John London, a Civil War veteran. Still virtually a child, he worked long hours in an Oakland cannery, then in 1891 took on the life of an oyster pirate on San Francisco Bay, earning a month's factory wages in one good night's haul. It was on the rough Oakland waterfront he began a relationship with alcohol, making friends and hanging out at Heinold's first and last chance saloon. The bar is still doing business today, the walls of the place celebrating their most famous customer. He fled the bar to massage his restless imagination, slipping through the Golden Gate on a seal hunting ship. It was on this trip the writer in London came alive, coming face to face with a monster storm, gathering the raw material for the legendary novel, The Sea Wolf. And then, in 1897, he chased the Alaskan gold rush to the Klondike gold fields. Today, visitors to Oakland's Jack London Square can still see the cabin he lived in near Dawson City, Yukon Territory. He would return with no gold, but loaded down with literary nuggets. All those cold months in the cabin, he filed away a lifetime of stories, capturing the richness of characters that would fill his books and short stories for years. In 1903, the world was spellbound with his masterpiece from the North Country, The Call of the Wild. Jack London became a bestseller. Readers were captivated by a dog named Buck. It became his best known book. They had discovered a major talent and would devour his stuff as fast as he could write it. Dynamic adventure, you can't put it down, you want to know what happens. It's, you know, it stirs up those emotions in you that are the joy of reading. He knew how to take you to a place. When you read his books, you really are transformed to where he was and what he experienced. In his short 40 years, he traveled everywhere and could have lived anywhere, but he chose life here. Under Sonoma Mountain, just above the town of Glen Ellen, he made his home. Jack Lennon thought this was one of the most beautiful spots on Earth. Became enchanted with the beauty of the surroundings. As Jack and Charmian rode the hills here, they thought it was an amazing, amazing spot. I ride over my beautiful ranch. Between my legs is a beautiful horse. The air is wine. The grapes on a score of rolling hills are red with autumn flame. Across Sonoma Mountain, Wisps of sea fog are stealing. The afternoon sun smolders in the drowsy sky. I have everything to make me glad I am alive. He felt that it was a magical area. He came up here from Oakland and San Francisco. And when he got to the Sonoma Valley, it just spoke to him. He decided to name it the Beauty Ranch because of the beauty that he found here that he felt within him. The trails that Jack hiked or rode on horseback run for miles all around here. And the silence, like in the old days, follows you everywhere. No city sounds up here, just a few birds. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Christina Ellis works at the park. There's a reason Jack chose this land, and you can feel it when you walk around. You just have the most stunning view of the ranch, the vineyards moving into the hills, and just this layer upon layer upon layer of forest. Yeah, it's a pretty special place. Delbert Wills visits the park frequently. Well, you know, Jack lived here. This was his life. We get to enjoy what he left behind. I have a real close connection to this place. Neil Shepard is a descendant of Jack London's stepsister. My father actually was born on this property and died on this property. He lives on the ranch, his family keeping the vineyards going as Jack left them a century ago. Like Jack, he loves the land and his horses. He had Shire horses, I've got Clydesdales. He had a respect and liking of that type of work with the land. Many people visit this park to see the old farm and ranch, but many more come from all over the world 
just for the history of the place. It's just beautiful here. Are you a Jack London reader as well? Yeah, well, I read him over in Germany as a kid. I'm a big fan of his writing. It brought the wilderness to us in the cities in a foreign country. Much of his later writing happened here, in this office. You can still see his desk. Nearby, Charmian would retype his work. Records of his good friend Caruso play in the background. The place is bulging with books because while Jack liked to write, he loved to read and would frequently fall asleep surrounded by books on his sleeping porch. Each night, he would awake with random thoughts, scratch them down, and save them. There's a rope running called a clothesline. Jack London would wake up in the middle of the night, he'd have an idea, he'd jot it down on a piece of paper and hang it from the clothesline. He would take all these notes down, he would file them away into categories where he could use them in the future. His writing is full of scrumptious details, plucked from the clothesline file. He used to write a thousand words a day before he would take his lunch. The writing, he said, was done all in the morning. Jack hand wrote his manuscripts. Charmian would type them in triplicate with a keen editorial eye, by the way. He got his most joy writing outside under a giant oak tree. He would set up a table, a cluster of books that he would take out and his writing supplies. That oak was threatened a few years ago and the state thought that it would have to be cut down. We found some people who took a look at the tree and decided that no, actually the base of the tree was very healthy and it's still there for people to enjoy. The whole park was threatened during the recession. The state nearly closed it until a private nonprofit group took over management of the park, keeping the trails and historic buildings open to thousands of visitors. Many enjoy the House of Happy Walls, the home Charmian built after Jack died. Here you can tour her bedroom, look at fascinating collections, and on special days, volunteers like Jim Wittes will bring Charmian's old grand piano back to life. This has become a museum to showcase London. People savor the rich displays of this California native. Down the trail, London pilgrims stop on a tiny hill, the gravesite for the Londons. Their ashes buried under a large boulder behind a fence covered in a mossy patina. Jack wanted it simple. I would rather be ashes than dust. I would rather that my spark should burn out in a brilliant blaze than it should be stifled by dry rot. A century later, an angry night would bring that brilliant blaze and threaten to destroy Jack's beauty ranch. 9.45 p.m. The first flames flashed up in Napa County, just north of Calistoga. The Tubbs fire would take just hours to race 15 miles to the west and ravage whole neighborhoods in Santa Rosa. Mandatory evacuation order, leave your homes. Minutes later, a night of daring rescues begins. Come on, she's disabled. All right, all right, let me get her feet, let me get her feet. And at 10 p.m., a new blaze is fanned to life on Nuns Canyon Road on the hills above Sonoma Valley. Cal Fire Captain Sean Jerry is one of the first on the scene. Multiple structures involved. Here's a good example of what drivers have been looking at on Highway 12 tonight. This fire has crossed the highway several times in the last couple hours. It's left drivers stranded on either side of the fire. I was totally frozen in fear. I'd, I've never seen anything like that in my life. The Ember Cast is what we fought. Within minutes, it just exploded, racing toward Glen Ellen. The winds literally picked up the flames and started new fires. The embers that were coming off of the structures were lighting the other structures. There were golf ball, the apple-sized embers. They were floating around in the air probably half a mile in front of the fire. It quickly jumped Highway 12 just outside Glen Ellen. Pushing south and west, it hit Warm Springs Road, where Captain Ted Hasler drove right into the inferno. Fire, heat, flames, smoke, getting bigger and bigger, and we kept losing houses. The fires were raging over five Northern California counties, and the numbers were devastating. More than 40 killed, thousands of homes destroyed, several nearby parks blackened. The fire started three miles from the park, above Beltane Ranch, near Nuns Canyon Road, swept south and west, quickly jumping Highway 12. Then it began to split, the embers spreading rivers of flames across and up London Ranch Road. 
More flames torched homes just east of the park. A radio call from Incident Commander Mark Brown is dire news for the park. Then we will need an evacuation warning from Warm Springs Road to London Ranch Road. It was probably 2 a.m. that we issued the evacuation order for the Jack London State Park. You could hear um, explosions. Scott Walker and his wife Sarah fled their century-old home just below the park around 2.30 a.m. There was just this dull, molten magma down the hill, and it was coming this way. They lost their home. The fire spread so quickly because of fireballs lofted by the wind. Fireballs as big as your fist. The wind just carried it straight up the hill towards the park. We just didn't want the legacy to be that everything burns there. The State Department of Parks and Recreation made a critical decision to send crews into the park and get all the historical artifacts to safety. While we were driving to the site, there was fire on both sides of the roads. Carol Dodge led the team. It was terrifying. Crews bubble wrapped and moved the priceless artifacts away quickly. Truckloads were moved to a warehouse in Sacramento, far from the flames. This was not a haphazard operation, but a battle plan mapped out years before. Emergency plan with pictures of the priority objects that we would want to get out. She pulls out the list, a detailed checklist to save these pieces of history at several parks including the General Vallejo House in the town of Sonoma. It's always in my purse, no matter where I am. It has the priority objects listed of what we would want to get out of the buildings in an emergency. Before leaving, they covered wood structures with a fireproof gel. The building was thermogel, non-flammable gel. We're convinced it would have saved the building. This is not the first time fire has touched this place. In 1906, the San Francisco earthquake triggered a barn fire on the property and in the 60s, fire destroyed the old winery building. And then there is the Wolf House, a fiery tragedy that just ripped the heart out of Jack London. He was going to have the luxuries that he had only imagined in his past. London began construction of the 15,000 square foot mansion in 1910. Even the shell of the place is stunning among the redwoods. I think the site was spectacular. This was his dream house. It had 26 rooms and nine fireplaces. The stonework is all that remains. So the reflecting pool would have been straight in front of us. Jack's library would have been to the left, and that was one of the things that he most loved about this house, because he finally had a place to put his 60,000 books. The guy spared no expense making sure he had a house that was amazing, that he, he said would stand for a thousand years, God permitting. God did not permit. August 22nd, 1913. Just days before it was finished, it caught fire. Jack and Charmian rushed to the scene, but all they could do was watch it burn. They stayed there till about 5 a.m. and came back to the cottage. Charmian notes in her diary, and she went over to look, and there he was in his porch with his face in his hands crying. He was devastated. After the Wolf House fire, he only lived for three and a half years. Jack, who was still just in his 30s, was already a sick man. The fire was just one crushing blow on top of a long list of health problems, issues that go back to the cruise on the snark and those months in the Solomon Islands. Where he contracted a tropical disease called Yaz, invades through open cuts. It's a running open skin sore that can go all the way down to the bone. For months, he applied mercury to his open wounds, slowly eating away at his organs. He had gotten enough mercury in his body so that eight years later, his doctor told Jack London he had little life left to live because his kidneys were in terrible condition. And his lifestyle never helped things. He smoked about three packs of unfiltered cigarettes a day. He was, at times, a very heavy drinker. His kidneys failing, his body flooded with poisons. We lost Jack in November 1916. One can only imagine what his despair would have been. First, losing the Wolf House, then 104 years later, as fire threatened the whole ranch. And as the flames intensify, the community knows it's fighting to save more than just Jack's Park. There are memories and history in these hills that surround the Beauty Ranch. We would have lost Jack London's legacy. We would have lost a tremendous amount of Jack London history. We were convinced the entire town of Glen Ellen and all the mountains around were gone. You could feel it would take a miracle to save the ranch. Out of nowhere, out of the smoke, a Cal Fire bulldozer showed up. Suddenly, 
two dozers arrive in Glen Ellen on giant flatbed trucks. A poet might have imagined it was Jack London up on the rig, but it was really that age-old brotherhood of firefighters charging in to help friends in need. Those are our neighbors, you know, people that we know and, and care about are up there. Marin County firefighter John Terstegi got right to work. I unloaded immediately, and this thing is just big and heavy. It uses brute strength to get the job done. 90,000 pounds rolls onto the fire line. The dozers first saved several houses and then moved toward the park. By the time we made it to London Ranch Road, the sun was just starting to come up. One of our objectives was, was to please keep it out of, out of Jack London State Park. It's up there, it's just all open country with nothing really to hold it. If it got well established on Sonoma Mountain because of the access issues and just the sheer size, there wasn't going to be much that we could do. We stopped the fire maybe 300 yards shy of the park entrance. I was going to start putting some engines at the visitor center right there because I know they have all the artifacts. That's right where the fire was heading. But it would be days before more engines and crews would arrive to protect the park. So the locals did it the old fashioned way with tractors, shovels and water buckets. The biggest thing that I did was I just didn't leave. Along London Ranch Road, which leads to the park, neighbors helped neighbors that first night. My son got on this old tractor and for six and a half hours cut a fire break. That was largely responsible for saving the upper part of this mountain, his house, my house, the winery in this whole area. We had no electricity, so for four or five hours, we just bucketed water to the neighbors' houses. You still see the burn along London Ranch Road where hand-to-hand -hand firefighting slowed it until winds died down. If the winds didn't die down, it would have been into Jack Lennon Park. The park was in jeopardy for almost six or seven days after that because the fire then later on spread. Pockets of fires still burned all around the park in Bennett Valley, northwest of Sonoma Mountain. And the main branch of the Nuns Fire was still a threat southeast of the park. From this vantage point here on Cavedale Road, you can see the awesome size of the fire. Flames are ripping through the trees. And so we walked up Cavedale Road. Nils Derrickson took a giant bulldozer up the narrow road. The fire activity is already picking up. The fire's burning more than it should be. At this point, it was threatening thousands of homes in the city of Sonoma and the park. We got to do what we got to do with what we have. We're going to throw everything we got at it. It's personal for him. His family has lived on Sonoma Mountain near the London Ranch since 1850. That's family heritage, you know, that's been around for a long time. Help poured in. Planes, copters, trucks, and thousands of firefighters. But forecasters warned of big winds returning. And by Wednesday, new trouble flared up near the park. Neil Shepard spotted flames running toward the Wolf House. It got within a couple hundred feet of the Wolf House's barn. And I called my boss, John Sears, and had him meet me with a water tender. Neil called and said, hey, John, we got problems. He was on pins and needles up there. He could go up any minute. Actually, the whole community was on pins and needles. So this way would be terribly when I see this still behind me on fire here. Pretty scary because it's coming this way. With most people evacuated, no one knew if the park or even their own homes had survived the flames. The Wolf House barn is right in here. We hadn't got there, it probably would have burned that barn down with it blowing as hard as it was. It could have blown it right up this mountain. It wouldn't have took nothing. Just if a little wind that came up, it'd have run right up that grassy hill. It'd have went to Petaluma for crying out loud. Finally, word trickled out. Um, Jack London, everything looks pretty good up there. For John and Neil and all the others, the miracle was in the wind. What was so amazing, John here with the 4,000 gallons of water and the wind died. And that helped us probably more than anything. I think it was a combination of the wind shifting and some people that refused to leave this mountain. There's a lot of real heroes around here. The danger for the region was not over for several weeks, but the fire had spared the park. In the aftermath, everyone could see just how close the flames got to the ranch. In fact, the road below the ranch shows homes just destroyed by the fire. So what was it that kept the flames from Jack's Mountain? Was it the winds or perhaps the incredible efforts of the firefighters? both really, but some think another factor was at work. It was Jack London watching over his ranch. Jack and Charmian, so I think the two of them said, enough fire, not this time. Everybody that lives in Glen Ellen thinks they have a little bit of Jack London spirit in them. In the months following the fire, the park was open free of charge, so the community had a place to come, reflect, and recover. It's a haven, 
in the midst of all the devastation that's happened around the valley. I've always loved it, but I especially love it now. It's a healing place. People's soul can be rejuvenated when they're here. On New Year's Day 2018, the community gathered to honor some of the firefighters and take a hike to the top of the mountain to remember what a special place had been saved. Up here, the views almost touch heaven. And up here, if you're inclined to let your imagination wander the way a reader of a great novel will get distracted by a magical twist of words, well, you can feel, almost see, a very young, vibrant Jack London riding high on his horse, looking down on this magnificent valley. And we can only imagine the story he would have written and the characters he would have captured to tell the world about the battle to save his mountain.